Hello everybody! If you have been following our channel for a little while now, you know that we live on a boat. Today we're going to take you inside and talk to you all about the cost of living on a boat and tell you exactly how much it cost us for 2019 and what it could possibly maybe cost you. Let's go into our office. My name is Billy, this is Sierra, and our pup Jetty. This is our home. Her name is Adrenaline. We decided normal lifestyle isn't quite right for us, so we've been living an unconventional but fulfilling life of challenge and adventure. Be sure to subscribe below and hop on board. First things first, you need to know how much your boat costs. Like, what are your monthly payments? Are you paying for it up front? Are you taking a loan out? What are you doing? So for us, we have a secured boat loan. Yeah, so we did pay a big chunk for our boat up front, um, but we also finance part of it. And like Sarah said, we have a secured boat loan, so we do make monthly payments. And we included those monthly payments in this list, but we did not include the upfront chunk of cash that we paid for the boat. So it these expenses overall are kind of our, our yearly running expenses, not our big expenses that we made in the past spread out over a few years. And those monthly payments average to about like $570 a month. So that was last year, and that's actually a little bit lower than what our actual monthly payments are, but that's what it averaged out to because there was a month or two that we didn't have to make those payments. We actually refinanced the boat because we did so much work on the boat and added a lot of value. We got a valuation survey, and the survey decided it was worth a lot more than what we paid for it, so we decided to refinance, and it just works out a little bit financially. So. That's why we skipped a few months. Our actual boat payments are going to be close to like $725 a month. Next thing, if you're paying for this boat and it's a big investment, you definitely want to have insurance on it. And our insurance cost close to $3,680 a year. And that, for what we're doing in our boat, that's actually pretty, it, like it's a lot of money, but it's pretty good from a lot of um, other cruisers that we talk to. The biggest things that add up in insurance are having an old boat and having it in the Caribbean or even Florida for hurricane season. Now we're in Grenada and our insurance required us to be in Grenada to be covered for hurricane season, which is south enough to be out of the main hurricane box. Even so, that price for insurance is still pretty good. It took us a heck of a lot of researching to find an insurance company that would insure our 30 plus year old boat in the Caribbean for hurricane season, but we finally did and we're happy with the company, we're happy with the rates, so everything is good on that front. This is actually the first boat we've ever had insurance on and we're yeah, glad. It's, uh, yeah, we are happy. We have insur insurance on our other boats because they were never valued super high and if we had damaged the boat significantly or lost the boats it wouldn't have been a huge loss to us but this boat if we ever like lost this boat it's our full-time home it's our job what we do with youtube and our blog and now and everything podcasts. we own is inside of this boat so right. that wouldn't be good but we'd be screwed you should always at least have liability insurance so if you happen to run into someone else's boat or anything like that you definitely want to be covered on that right that's the other scary part is say you dragged anchor and ran into a big mega yacht and you owe thousands and thousands of dollars of damage to their boat that's another scary situation you could check your anchor you could check your mooring you could do all the things you need to do right but something could still happen and we've been in the situation where the boat has dragged before and it's not a fun situation and you don't want to be in it i think we're pretty good on insurance we're lucky that it's not more than that and it is a big chunk of change but it's worth it for us our next big expense actually it's not that big of an expense it's a huge expense it's just documentation so our boat's u.s Coast Guard documented and it only costs $26 a year to renew. It's more expensive the first time you you get yeah. it done but we've had it for a couple years so we're just paying the renewal fee. Our next category is by far our biggest category and that is repairs, maintenance, and upgrades. We spent a total of 31 grand this past year on repairs, maintenance, and upgrades and you guys may be thinking that is a ton of money and it is but we knew that when we bought our boat. So we bought our boat for less than $50,000 and for a sailing catamaran, that's like unheard of unless it's sunken at the bottom of the water somewhere. Which our boat was pretty beat up and we knew that and we knew it was going to be more work than we thought, just like boats always are. And But we bought it knowing that 
the boat had a really good pedigree. It has a lot of history, a good following, and whatever repairs, maintenance, and upgrades we put into the boat, we'd probably get that back on the back end when we sell the boat, um, just like we've done with every other one of our boats. But don't listen to that and say, oh, you can go buy a boat that's falling apart now and do the same thing. That takes doing all of that work yourself and... Doing it smartly and upgrading it smartly and... Having a boat that has a following and people that love it, so you have people coming to want it. Right. There are some like production boats that are just a dime a dozen and if you put in all this work and money and time and energy you might not get even close to the same amount back when you sell it it's not the case for every scenario but if you do it very smart you can do that successfully exactly when we bought the boat we budgeted for having to pay these big expenses in these coming years with putting all these upgrades on the boat so this past year what did we do we did we did all our standing rigging we went with synthetic st standing rigging which which has been working out great i did all the work myself all the splicing and covering and everything like that we had the boat haul to do a bottom job and we had some blisters so we did all of that work ourselves with help of one of our friends for sanding the bottom and while the boat was hauled we also replaced the cross beam big part of the boat so that was a big project yeah so our forward cross beam was an old boom that we got used but in really good condition and that worked out really well we installed it ourselves we took it apart ourselves big project we also made new rudders from scratch <laughs> yeah so we had the help of a professional boat builder in florida which was awesome and uh yeah new rudders we installed a new water maker this year um, which Let is look at my list. definitely an upgrade and we got a new windlass this year anchor windlass still manual anchor windlass so not super ex expensive because our other one was shot but it's still a thousand dollars here a thousand dollars there adds up so fast we got new custom water tanks you remember back in i think it was february when we came to our dinghy and our dinghy engine was gone well that was three thousand dollars out of our pocket that we weren't expecting to pay the new titanium chain plates oh the mac pack and the shade which, yep, add up. And I think that's about it for at least our big repairs, maintenance, upgrades. And there's a ton of little stuff that goes into that, like a lot, such as um, like all the paints and fiberglass and epoxy and like just all that little stuff that also adds up a lot. So $31,000 repairs, maintenance, and upgrades. Sounds like a lot, but it's adding value to our boat. Next category. Dockage. So as you guys know, we prefer to be out on anchor, but sometimes you have to go to a marina. And this year we spent, I think more time at a marina than we have any other year probably. Yeah, and the main reason for that was Dominican Republic. With our limited Spanish and our first time being there, we decided that it was gonna be much easier to be at a couple marinas instead, and that worked out really well. I'm glad with that decision. Yeah, their rates are very reasonable compared to Florida, so we got a lot for what we were spending. And the other thing that killed us in this category was having to have a layup period for our insurance. So the boat needed to be laid up either in the water, out of the water, but at a marina. And it was just a period where the boat is not being used. And I think it's meant for like just doing your repairs and maintenance just to make sure that the boat stays in good shape. So we were in a marina for an entire month in Grenada. From there, that it was just kind of scattered. What we normally do, just a day or two here, a day or two there, which it really, I think we do a good job of that. It was just those big two chunks that added up to a lot. So the total dockage we paid in last year was $3,177. Next category, fuel. So as you guys know, we live on a sailboat and we primarily move by the wind, but we do have that lovely generator and our dinghy, of course, that we take absolutely everywhere. And those two gasoline engines, the generator and the dinghy engine, they sip fuel. They're really fuel efficient, but we do take the dinghy everywhere. And we do have to fill up with diesel fuel on the catamaran once in a while. I think we sail probably a little more than most cruisers on catamarans do. Yes, because we know our engines are 30 years old and they have a limited lifespan. So we just try not to yeah. use them. <laughs> So our fuel bill for the whole entire year was $1,107. Which is pretty dang good because we have sailed over 2,500 miles. Yeah, and what was our trawler fuel bill? It, it was, was a close to it. It was a grand, but just one way up the East Coast, it yeah. was about a grand. So it was probably close to two or three grand for the year. So yeah, definitely saving on that. So I'm pretty proud of ourselves this year. Yeah, that's really not bad at all. Food is the next big expense. So if you know us, you know we like to eat and we like to eat well. And, and we, we like to try to eat healthy as well. 
Yeah, but well is expensive. And we also love to go out when we are in new countries. It's a perfect way to go see the culture of somewhere new. And we don't go out and party much, so we don't spend a ton of money on drinks or anything, but I do get a beer or two when we go out to dinner, see our might have a glass of wine. We have now limited ourselves to only one night a week. So that's going out to eat. Going to grocery stores, you can definitely shop pretty similar to the prices in the States, but if you really want something you're probably gonna pay more for it for example S syrup syrup however you want to say it crazy expensive not even worth getting it, it was like 80 ecs for a tiny itty bitty bottle of syrup and then uh like almond butter we mm. couldn't find almond butter and if we did like even in grenada it was really expensive it was expensive but if you're willing to just kind of shop by the prices and shop on what's local and what's cheap in the area you are, you can do really well. You can probably average less than, you know, what you would pay for groceries in the States. Yeah. I'd say almost definitely. Especially if you're going to the local markets and getting the fresh produce that the farmers are bringing to like the markets and everything. Yeah. They're very affordable. Yeah, so in total, last year we paid $12,900 a year for food. That includes every single thing we have eaten and paid for in the past year. It even includes Jetty's dog food. Yep. <laughs> and uh, that averages out to about a little over $1,000 a month. My sister Catherine stayed with us for four months, and part of that deal was we paid for her food because she helped us do a bunch of work. So yeah, that includes three people for part of the year. Next category, phone and internet. If you're watching this, it had to be uploaded via the internet. What we have now, we have Google Fi cards, and we have our two Google Fi cards, and we also have a third Google Fi card. We need all those SIM cards because we need the data to be able to run this business, to be able to upload our YouTube videos and get on the internet and do research and all this stuff. Um, and we found that like we were going out to eat a lot more trying to hunt down like Wi-Fi spots and the Wi-Fi wasn't even good. Like we couldn't even upload a video. So we decided just to take that money and invest it in different SIM cards and we can kind of go through those SIM cards and use up the high speed data to get our work done. In the middle of last year, we switched from Verizon to Google Fi, and I think it was a very good decision. Yeah, we're pretty happy. Google Fi isn't perfect, and it was their customer service isn't great, but it's been working really well. Um, it gets a little funky in the French countries, but still works, and yeah, overall, we're very happy with, with that decision. Yeah, so with Google Fi, we pay $50 per SIM card, and that's for unlimited data up to 22 gigs of high-speed data and after that it's throttled but you also have to pay any international calling fees and that's around like 20 cents a minute so we try to do all of our call calling via facetime or whatsapp or skype or something in total including like the transition and some verizon last year we paid 3900 dollars for phone and internet next category health insurance. I am lucky enough to still be under my mother's health insurance and that is really good health insurance because she is in the public school system. I am with United Healthcare. And I pay my own health insurance and I pay about $1,200 a year. It's like low premium, high deductible rate. I'm very healthy and I try to stay very healthy and uh, it's pretty much a catastrophe plan. Like if I broke something or something like that, then it'd be high deductible, but I still have, you know, those major expenses covered. This coming year is going to be different because I'm going to be on my own. So we're probably gonna be looking for a different kind of health insurance plan. So if you know a good one, let us know. Especially for international travel. Our next category is customs and immigration fees and all the check-in fees that go with it. So we spent a total of $613 checking in, checking out, and all the fees that are included with going to a different country for the year. The biggest out of all those fees were the Bahamas. Of course, it's th over $300, $320 to check into the Bahamas, but that gives you your fishing permit in three months. Totally worth it. Um, I mean, the abundance of fish there compared to everywhere else we have been is incredible. You make up a few spearfish or whatever, you make up for that just in the food you catch. And then DR is like 120 bucks, Puerto Rico 30 bucks, Grenada $83. And some of that depends on how long you're staying there. Like Grenada, we paid a little bit more because we stayed four or five months. Four or five months, yeah. So $613 for the year, not too bad. Traveling with a dog can get a little bit <coughs> expensive. With Jetty, we have to get all of her like vet and shots and different certificates before we leave the States, and that is pretty dang expensive. And then we also have to get her a vet appointment pretty much 
before we enter any new country. So all those visits definitely add up. And our total cost for traveling with a dog last year was... $1,080. Expensive, but she's totally worth it. Other travel expenses. So a lot of the times we go on tours, we take taxis, we hire a guide, uh, we rent a car, and all of that kind of miscellaneous travel expenses add up to about $1,400 for the year. And you can definitely do that. Cheaper? Well, yeah. But you could also definitely do that way more expensive. Because a lot of the times we prefer to go on our own and explore on our own. But as soon as you start hiring guide after guide after guide, it definitely adds up. It's good for the country's economy, but you have to limit where you can spend that money. Yeah, well, we do at least. And we, we are, I think we're really good at that. Especially because we enjoy doing it ourselves most of the time. And we don't rent a car a ton. If we rent a car for a day or two, we make good use of it. So I think that's a pretty fair expense. $14 for the year. Some other costs you probably don't think about include water, trash, and laundry. Now that we have a water maker, those expenses are going lower, but if you do not have a water maker, you have to go to a marina in these uh, Caribbean islands and you have to pay. In the States, you generally don't have to pay to fill up with fresh water, but down here you do. Yeah, and it's not too much. It's like maybe 10 to 20 cents a gallon, but it adds up a little bit. And we have a water maker now, and we only had it for maybe, what, the last two two months or one month of this year cycle and then trash like in the states obviously you can always find a free place to throw out trash a lot of times in these far out places in the bahamas some places in the caribbean they charge you to throw out trash if you're very careful most of the time you can find a free place to throw out trash or just maybe it's two or three bucks yeah and laundry so you can either hand wash it which can use up a lot of your water and take up a lot of your time or you can try to find a do-it-yourself laundry mat or you can pay for a service to do your laundry and and that's what we found kind of surprising in the caribbean most of the time it's a service like that it's easier to find than a do-it-yourself laundry machine especially one that works well we were paying a lot more for those laundry services and it would add up to like 60 to 100 bucks for some big loads of laundry that we had when we do all our sheets and towels and stuff like that yeah so the majority of this money we're telling you about for this category is from laundry now that we have water maker sierra has been awesome and doing all our laundry by hand so that's saving us a ton of money and because we have a water maker we don't have to worry too much about conserving that much water and we can just do it on the boat we'll still once in a while do our major loads at like one of these laundry services our total cost to live on a boat last year was just over $67,000. Like we said before, that sounds like a ton of money, and it is a ton of money, but you also gotta consider, and I didn't say this in the boat repairs and maintenance, this boat is part of our business, our business of making YouTube videos and creating interesting and useful and educational content uh, for the internet, for you, and hopefully it helps inspire and educate you. Um, but we're able to write some of those expenses off because it is part of our business so you have to take that into consideration and it's also our home we don't pay rent we take what rent or mortgage payments we would make um and that goes into our boat instead like we said before sixty-seven thousand. 31,000 of that was repairs, maintenance, and upgrades to the boat. Yeah, and like we said, again, we'll get that back when we sell the boat, which is not always the case, but I think we'll get at least most of it back in our case. Hopefully. Uh, fingers crossed. Cross your fingers for us. If you're looking at that number and thinking, <clears throat> heck, I'm never going to be able to live on a boat, do not think that. Y living on a boat can cost as much as you have. You can buy food super cheap. You can get a boat that doesn't require any of this repairs and maintenance. Or just a very simple boat that doesn't cost that much for repairs and maintenance. We did go a little crazy with this boat with repairs and maintenance and upgrades because it's a performance boat and we i want to we want to bring her back to her good standing self right like which is why we invested in synthetic rigging and just like that hot, a little bit higher end stuff so remember it costs as much as you have whatever work you're trying to do it's probably going to take longer and cost a little bit more than you think but it's totally worth it we've heard of people doing the same living the same lifestyle that we live for just a few hundred dollars a month really not a lot at all and it's totally possible it's also possible to live a lot like, more expensive yeah spend a lot more money throughout the year living on a boat if you want to live in a marina you're pretty much paying rent to live in a marina on yeah. top of your boat payments you're paying for your slip and, and boat maintenance still you still gotta maintain it so ways to save living on a boat 
anchor. Instead of going to marina. Yep. Do your own boat work. Shop um, around for everything. Shop around for marina fees, haul out fees. Shop around for supplies. One of the most useful things that I've saved money on is like we redid all our lines and stuff. And West Marine has the 30 to 40% off uh, bulk line sale like once or twice a year. And that saves you so much money. Just stuff like that set a budget that's been really helping us this past couple months because we have told ourselves we're only going out to eat once a week we still get that culture and interaction with new people that we could meet but we're realizing it saves us a lot of money when we eat on the boat and cook our own food yeah and not in budgeting not just for food like so we actually have a big project coming up am i allowed to say that something coming up relatively soon and and it's required us to take a real good hard look at our expenses and and budgets and stuff like that yeah that's what really forced us to budget and it has been helping us a ton even with like the boat stuff because there are a lot of things on like boat work repairs maintenance and upgrades there's a lot of things you could do there's an infinite amount of things you could do but if we budget ourselves and if it's a decision like should we do this or should we not do this we can go to our budget and look and see all right well did we spend or do we have money left this month to invest in the boat or did we use it all up and we shouldn't do it until maybe next month when we have an example of that is our chain so that windlass we mentioned before if you've watched some of our past videos you probably have heard that the windlass we bought does not match the chain that we have Just because be it's not windlass spec it's the correct size but it's not it's, it skips and it's pretty much useless so we're still bringing up this chain by and hand. on top of that it's only two years old and like it's already rusting through uh, some of the diameter of the chain so we need new chain but at the end of every month we look at our budget and say do we have the money to buy this new chain that we want or no so this past month we didn't but we have listed our old chain for sale hoping that someone could use it as like a mooring anchor or someone that doesn't have one list. Yeah, because uh, about half the chain is still perfectly good to use, especially for a mooring anchor. Yeah, so just making those decisions a little bit more car carefully, and it's really been helping. Whereas in the past, I would have just splurged and say, screw it, we need it, you know, whatever. Put it on a credit card. No, don't put it on a credit card. Only spend it if you have it. So you guys are probably wondering, where the heck does all this money come from that we're paying for these $30,000 of repairs, maintenance, and upgrades, and all these other categories. We've been lucky enough in the past few years to grow our YouTube channel and our website enough that that makes us enough money where we can do this stuff. And like I said, we still got to be very careful. We can't splurge. Um, we got to keep things in check. But if we do that, then uh, it, it all works out. Yeah. And like you guys are probably looking at this saying that's a lot of money, but that's all we buy. We don't go shopping. We don't go like out and like go to casinos. We don't do any of that stuff. All of this money we just told you, that's all we spent. Except for our personal savings and savings for future projects and stuff like that. We don't make a lot of money on YouTube. Don't think you can go to YouTube and make this tons of money. We don't, <laughs> but our patrons are amazing. They support us and you guys do too. Watching the videos and just selling stuff on our online store has all been helping us be able to continue going. Definitely, definitely. And then some sponsors have also helped make it possible and just helped make it a little bit easier in, in some areas of what we do. So yep. thank you and, to all our sponsors. Yeah, and we're gaining a lot of skills along this whole way. So if YouTube crashed tomorrow, like we could go get other jobs. Like if we needed to stop and work, we could. We absolutely could. And we still have our skills that we've used in the past and our water sports skills. Like I've taught kiteboarding for years. I can always go back to teaching kiteboarding. We could teach surfing or stand up paddling. We could start our own business doing that. We could get into social media marketing or internet marketing for another company if we wanted to. So yeah, we always have backup jobs or careers. Yeah, if you had to have a career tomorrow, would it be? I would probably be a lifeguard or a fireman. Most lifeguards in Florida tend to shift to be a fireman anyway. It's just better pay and benefits and stuff. Yeah, I think I'd probably be a teacher. We'll make some more content about how we make money and how other people make money living on the boat. Um, so stay tuned for that and leave a comment about any questions you might have in that regard. That project we mentioned earlier, any guesses what it is? And a lot of this was really personal information, so I really hope it helps you. We kind of went out on a limb to share all of this stuff. We had never told anyone that we bought our boat for less than $50,000 before. Yeah, yeah, it is very personal. And, and we get, it's it's can be very frustrating in that regard because like, like we'll we said- We'll get comments like, 
like we trust fund babies and all this stuff and it's not true we work really hard and we worked our way up to that oh that is something that i want to mention like in the past we've never spent this much money living or working or traveling on boats so when we were on Tula, our small 26 foot monohull, we only we did only spend a few, probably a few hundred bucks a month. And then when we were on the trawler, um, we spent a little bit more, but still significantly less than this. I think only 20 grand a year was our last one on the trawler versus 67. Um, and we, we spent more money into that boat than we did on Tula, but less into that boat than we did into this boat. Um, so yeah, we worked our way up and yeah, it is very personal. And we have feelings. <laughs> so be nice. <laughs> so this episode is also going to be a podcast episode, our first one actually. And so if you guys are watching this on YouTube or you're reading our blog post, you can also listen to this on a podcast if you'd like. Just uh, subscribe to our podcast channel. It's going to be Tools in the Summer, I'm sure. The link will be right in the description. And yeah, we really appreciate if you share this, um, whether it's a YouTube video or the podcast, with your friends and family or anyone you think might be interested in it. It helps us a ton um, and it helps us keep creating content like this. If you really want to support this video or this podcast, uh, subscribe and consider becoming a patron. Um, that link will be in the description or the show notes. They already know what the project is. The patrons? Do they? No, but they will. <laughs> they the will. By the time edited. this comes out, they will for sure. Yeah. So patrons, they're um, very up to date with what we're doing, and they get early releases of information and videos and podcasts and stuff like that. And if you currently live on a boat and keep track of your finances, let us know how much you spend in a year. Are we close? Are we far away? Do you have any suggestions on how we could save more? Um, we're always interested in that. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and we will see you later. <laughs>